In this video, we're going to discuss how we estimate the cash flows for a capital budgeting project. In future videos, we'll also then look at the risk analysis of those cash flows and how we apply that to the decision making process. So let's look at a project first. We have an equipment cost of $280,000. Now the current um, tax code allows for 100% depreciation on this asset. So the very first year we'll be able to depreciate 100% of this asset. So we need to know the after tax cost of the asset. To find after tax at time zero, you take the original tax, the, the cost, and multiply it by one minus T. So the actual equipment cost after taxes is $210,000. Now, there's some changes in networking capital. Inventory is going to go up by $25,000. Accounts payable up by $5,000. Sales are going to be a hundred thousand units at two dollars a piece, and variable cost is going to be sixty percent of sales. Now, the life of this project we expect it to be four years. Um, again, this equipment we've already interested uh, talked about it's eligible for a hundred percent bonus depreciation. So, again, when we think about depreciation in the income statement we have to now recognize is that this asset is fully depreciated at the time of purchase the salvage value of this piece of equipment is 25 grand tax rates 25 percent we have a weighted average cost of capital of 10 percent so let's work our way through some of these calculations we we need to estimate the initial investment costs of the project. We're going to have to look at the annual operating cash flows. We're going to have to talk about these net operating uh, assets capital. We're also going to have to determine what are the cash flows at the end of the project that are attributable to the actual purchase of the assets. So we're going to end up with a timeline where we have um, the, the initial cost, free cash flow zero. We're going to have a cash flow for each year of the project's life, free cash flow. Now this last cash flow, the last year, we actually have two cash flows, one from operations, OCF, and one from the terminal cash flows. So let's see how we can work some of these uh, through some of these uh, this uh, these cash flows. So let's think about the change in net working uh, net operating working capital. Inventories go up by twenty five grand. That's funded by accounts payable of five grand. So the change in net operating capital means we're going to have to spend. Uh, $20,000. So there'll be an expense of 20 grand. Inventory's up 25 grand, but we're borrowing five. So that means the net cash outflow, again, is 20,000. We've already discussed the actual investment cost is 210,000. So the free cash flow in year zero is negative $230,000. It's the cost of the asset plus it's also the change in any net working uh, net operating work capital what about operating cash flows so 200,000 is each year's increase in revenue 60% of that's the operating cost now if this had not been and a, an asset that was eligible to 100% depreciation, we would have depreciation expenses here. But again, it's zero because it was fully depreciated at time zero. So we have the EBIT, 
The tax on our 80,000 is 20,000. So the uh, earnings before interest and uh, is EBIT times one minus T, right? That's the operating tax flow from here, 60 grand each. Add back to that zero for our depreciation each year. We have our, what's sometimes referred to as cash flow after tax of $60,000, or you could also refer to this as the free cash flow for each year. So what happens in the last year? We're selling the old asset for $25,000 or $25 in this case. The tax on this, 25%, and since there is zero book value, it was fully depreciated a while ago, the entire amount, the price minus book value, book value is now zero, uh, is fully taxed, $6.25 here. So the after-tax salvage value on the assets, $18.75. Now, when we're talking about this net operating working capital, we assume that at the end of the project, all of this is liquidated. And it's liquidated um, assuming that there's no tax. So there's no tax when you liquidate these operating capital assets. So we end up with a terminal cash value of 3875. Uh, so what's the final cash flow in year four? $60 came from uh, operations and then 3875 came from the terminal cash flow so just to kind of review we recovered this net operating work capital at the end there's no work there's no tax impact for that we do have to worry about taxes on the salvage value again in this case it was the simplest case with 100% depreciation in the first year. So again, we need to calculate what the tax on the sale of this old asset would be. But in this case, uh, that was pretty easy to do. Um, so let's look at what this looks like on a spreadsheet. So here we have our new project, 280,000 is the basis, tax rates 25%, four years life, salvage value at the end and we can start these numbers start to populate throughout here we know that our networking capital we calculate that we know that's uh, negative 20 right so the cash flow free cash flow year one's negative 230 above we calculate the changes in earnings before depreciation and taxes subtract out the taxes which in this case again is zero so we end up with $60 per year is that what we refer to as the change in cash flow after taxes. To calculate free cash flow, we then add um, that to whatever other cash flows may come from either networking capital being liquidated or the end of the project and our terminal value. So here we end up with our timeline for this particular project, which is exactly what we had talked about uh, before. Now, this is a very simplified version, right? We might want to incorporate a lot more complexity. We want to look at uh, maybe inflation on prices, on the cost. We want to look at the uh, potential changes in units sold. So there is lots of complexity that we can add to this particular kind of a cash flow statement uh, and income statements for a project. A couple other fine lines we have to add here in the sand, uh, you know, is, you know, what about financing? We didn't talk anything at all about dividends or interest. That's because the weighted average cost of capital incorporates the financing of the company. So anything associated with issuing common stock, issuing bonds, paying interest, paying dividends, that's all incorporated into the weighted average cost of capital. So to include it here again would be double counting those financing costs. 
there's something referred to as a sunk cost. So let's say there's a $50,000 improvement to this building that we have to make before anything can be done. Do we include that in this project? So actually the answer is no, because this is what's referred to as a sunk cost. We shouldn't include it because we only want to include those things that change if we do the project. And since this 50,000 has to be spent regardless of doing or not doing, it shouldn't be included. Now I will tell you, certain companies incorporate this just, just like any other expense. So it's really up to the company when we think about real life, right? But if you're thinking about maybe a, a homework problem somewhere or a test question, sunk costs are not included in the cash flows of a project. What about something referred to as opportunity costs? In this case, we could lease out this building for 25 grand a year. How would that affect the analysis? Well, if it could be, then, and we don't, we lose that money, we lose that opportunity. So the after-tax opportunity cost is 18,750, right? It's the cost we would lose, and then one minus the tax, 25%, tells us again that this is $18,750. So this is a cost of giving up this asset. It should be added to and incorporated into our cash flows. <clears throat> what if this new product line decreases the sales of another line? This is what we refer to as an externality. Sometimes it's called cannibalism, right? If we do this project, we're going to lose money on a different project. So what we want to incorporate here in the expenses is we want to incorporate the net cash effect that happens in the business. So in this case, where we said sales are 20,000, maybe we want to reduce that by 10,000 to reflect the sales lost on the other asset uh, that's going to be given up. So those sales change. So these externalities can either be positive or negative. But in any case, they certainly have to be accounted for in the project. So in the end, here we have our project. We've calculated the net present value, internal rate return, all of the statistics for us. And we see that the net present value is negative. So again, using our capital budgeting technique uh, decision rules, this would be a project that we would not do. It does not increase the wealth of the company and or the shareholders. <clears throat> so if this was a replacement project, and this is where I was getting at something a little bit earlier. If this is a brand new project, we're not doing anything, this is exactly how this uh, analysis would go. But let's say that this piece of equipment is replacing another piece of equipment. Does that complicate matters? And the answer, of course, is absolutely. Because we need to know the incremental cash flows. So now we're going to have to forecast two sets of uh, financial statements, uh, of income statements. We're going to have to forecast what will happen to this company if we do absolutely nothing. If we just go on for the next four years, we don't buy anything, we just continue operations, what do we think cash flows will look like? Then we have to do what we have just done, which is predict what do we think will happen if we do this project. And now the incremental cash flow is the difference between the two. You subtract the cash flows if you do nothing. You subtract that from the cash flows if you do something. So it's what you do minus what you wouldn't do or didn't do. That gives us the change. And of course, then that is when we're going to calculate 
the change in free cash flows. And that is what we ultimately an analyze with a project. So I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea of at least some of the complexity uh, of forecasting cash flows for a project. Look forward to seeing you soon.